Camouflage is more than just printed fabrics, clothing, and face paint, as for millions of years, various wildlife from creatures as small as moths to as large as leopards use it to their advantage, whether it be to hide themselves from predators or from prey. Because of this, oftentimes people will look to fauna to get inspiration for camouflage patterns, designs such as tiger stripe and leopard being some of the most famous. However, there is one that holds quite a bit of mystery and is sought after by many collectors around the world. South Africa's experimental giraffe camouflage, considered to be one of the rarest patterns on the planet. The story behind this one is a bit muddled, but can be somewhat pieced together into a short yet intriguing story, so let's dive right in. With South Africa gaining a form of independence from Great Britain in 1910 and becoming a union, the country wasn't in any rush to create a major military or defense force. Between then and 1994, the armed forces would be restructured three times. This led to a number of reformations, both unit as well as equipment and uniform-wise. However, the most significant of these for this story was that of the formation of 44 Parachute Brigade in 1978, which incorporated the already existing 1, 2, and 3 Parachute Battalions. Parachute units were introduced in the 1960s as a way to quickly respond to any form of uprising or violence that could sprout up anywhere at any time. This concern became a reality during a prolonged conflict, which would come to be known as the Angolan Bush War or simply South African Border War. Though there are many factors, factions, and motives, the elements of the conflict most directly related to South Africa began in 1966, when the People's Liberation Army of Namibia, or the PLAN, an armed branch of the Southwest African People's Organization, or SWAPO, began offensive measures against South Africa in an attempt to gain independence. Violence slowly increased into full-scale conflict after the South African African government disregarded United Nations Resolution 2145, which abolished a mandate that had granted South Africa administrative control over Namibia, then known as Southwest Africa. However, being that 44 was predominantly infantry-based, it was quickly realized that this unit could not operate effectively, and so the battalion began receiving additional units such as anti-tank, engineering, and armored to name a few. Now capable of a wide variety of operations with an emphasis on airborne tactics, a number of special operation units spawned from it. One such was that of the Pathfinders, which focused on covert operations primarily behind enemy lines. With all these specialty units being reorganized and formed, they were allowed a bit more freedom than other conventional units of the South African Defense Force, SADF for short, when it came to weapons, equipment, and uniforms. This led to the Parachute Battalions, Parabats for short, experimenting with and using a series of camouflage patterns, some that were seen a bit more often, and others extremely rarely enter the giraffe camouflage. Now, as stated earlier, this camouflage is considered to be one of the rarest patterns in the world. It is so hard to come by that even photos of it are a challenge to locate. Shrouded in mystery, rumor, and a lack of information, the pattern story has become something of a legend among collectors, as not everything can be verified. That being said, we'll piece together what is known and what has been claimed over the years. Supposedly around 80 or so uniforms were made and distributed sometime between 1980 and 1982 to the pathfinders of the 1 Parachute Battalion of the 44 Parachute Brigade. Made up of two tones seen on many giraffes, an off-white and a brownish-orange, the pattern interestingly seems to draw from the shapes seen on the skin of the West African giraffe, rather than ones closer to South Africa, such as the Angolan and South African subspecies. This was likely due to the concept of the camouflage being more of an idea that the general shapes of the giraffe would be effective for use in arid and earthy terrains, rather than to emulate the patterns of regional subspecies for symbolic or identity purposes. During testing, it was said the pattern was somewhat effective in a handful of locations, but overall underperformed. This, coupled with the basic yet distinctive solid brown colored uniforms known as Nutria, still going strong among the large majority of the SADF, resulted in the pattern being discarded. Seen in such small numbers, pieces were limited with the pattern appearing on items such as button shirts, pants, bush hats, and South African airborne jump smocks known as slang fells, which is Afrikaans for snakeskin due to the reinforced sections around the shoulders, elbows, bottom of pockets, and the lower leg section often referred to as beaver tail, which were originally made from leather. So what happened to these garments? Well, the SADF apparently ordered them destroyed, and it had been said an officer who was issued them, likely Colonel Jan Breitenbach, the commander of 44 at the time, had all but one set burned. That one set was kept, which then passed hands until it ended up in a private collection in France, and eventually found its way to another one in the United States. 
With very few photos, a lack of info, and the possibility of only one in existence, many have the following sentiment. That belongs in a museum! Now, with very little info to go on, the few photos of the camouflage, both dating back to the field trials as well as newer pictures of the alleged surviving pieces, have circulated, adding to the mystery and intrigue. Two of the photos seen of the camouflage being used showcased Peter McAleese, a British Army paratrooper turned SAS member who afterwards became a soldier of fortune fighting in Angola before joining the Rhodesian SAS and eventually finding himself in the SADF where he wound up helping create the 44 Parachute Brigade's Pathfinder unit. Both of the pictures were associated with his 1993 book, no Mean Soldier, and the announcement of the 2015 updated version of it, Beyond No Mean Soldier, which chronicles his experiences. At some point, though, a Genesis endeavor, sometimes jokingly referred to as Project Jurassic Park, led to the recreation of the camouflage. Using the few photos of the pattern as reference, it was reprinted on enough fabric to create roughly 12 sets of bush hats, shirts, and pants, along with a handful of slang fells, all made in period-correct SADF Nutria style. The creator said once those pieces were sold, they would never be made again at least by him. With sets selling for a few hundred each, most of these pieces quickly sold, causing them to become very rare and sought after as well. One of the last pieces seen was a slang fell smock listed on the website Bid or Buy in May of 2020, which sold for 5,225 South African Rand, which equates to about 340 US dollars as of this video's release. And that's pretty much the story of the giraffe camouflage, a pattern that at the time was seen as unremarkable and ineffective, but found a much more interesting afterlife in collectors and military history circles decades after its fielding. Again, a lot of people consider this story as something of a fable or a legend, and because of that, appreciate it even more. Because its tale really only lives on in collectors' forums, Discord servers, and so on, information can change and hearsay can spread. So consider this video as a way to get a basic understanding of the pattern, as the history is there but can't entirely be confirmed. Either way though, hopefully the alleged surviving set shows up at some point in the future, or at least remains in safe hands. Maybe, just maybe down the line, it will wind up in a museum, or at least in a way where it can be appreciated by any and all who find interest in militaria and camouflage. We'd like to thank Instagram user Rodies Plaid, who provided a bit of information and pictures of his reproduction set. Hopefully this shorter episode was entertaining and informative. Be sure to subscribe to the channel or check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.